The Denver Broncos have interviewed Jim Caldwell for their vacant head coaching opportunity. Why is it that Caldwell could be an under-the-radar favorite for the job? Plus, Sarah Bettinger and myself, we share with Broncos country our top three head coaching candidates for the Broncos in this hiring cycle. We'll get into that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Just want to say thank you so much. I want to give a massive shout out to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format or whether you watch on YouTube. We have you covered every single day, all year long, because for the true fan, there is never an off-season. From the South Stands to the End Zone, I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports. Joined alongside, as always, by my co-host and my good friend, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantlyorange.com. Sarah, my friend, as we talked about, the next couple weeks here for this Broncos team, and, and in particular for Lockdown Broncos, a lot of the conversation is going to be geared around the head coaching search for the Broncos' next head coach. And on Wednesday, they interviewed Jim Caldwell. And there is a really good chance he could be an under-the-radar favorite for the Broncos. And I know we'll share a little bit later on the show our top three candidates in this cycle personally. First off, let's talk about Jim Caldwell. This was something I don't think anybody really anticipated. I know it was a name some people mentioned they would like to see interviewed. And out of nowhere, the Broncos, they got an interview with him on Wednesday. Well, Cody, you know, I don't often wear uh, an actual tinfoil hat, but you know how much I love to put it on, right? I love to put on the tinfoil hat and think about, you know, connecting some dots in Broncos country, reasons why things happen. Well, you know, Jim Caldwell, he used to be a quarterback's coach, head coach of Peyton Manning, right, with the Indianapolis Colts. And we know that Peyton Manning is obviously still very connected to the Denver Broncos organization. So you can see the breadcrumbs there and you could connect those dots and everything. So you can't help but wonder, did Peyton Manning have any influence in getting Jim Caldwell an interview? He has not coached in the NFL on an official capacity since 2019. So here's the interesting thing. He's interviewed for a number of positions since that time, right? Obviously, the teams are still talking to him. He's 67 years old. He's obviously got a great track record in the league, of course, as an assistant coach, but also as a head coach. That's something that people need to be mindful of is that Jim Caldwell's not just, you know, getting getting talked to because, well, he used to be a, a great coach. And, and no, they think that he can still resonate in an NFL locker room today. And I think there's ample reason to believe that, Cody. I think when we come, you come up with all these lists of potential coaches and people that you'd love to see be involved with the Denver Broncos. I think you and I both agreed early on that Jim Caldwell should have been considered, right? I know we didn't get to go in depth too much on the potential targets before the Broncos actually started targeting guys. But at the same time, you look at the, the entirety of who's available out there right now and what the Broncos specifically need, what they're specifically targeting. It really does feel like Jim Caldwell Checks a lot of those boxes, doesn't he? Yeah, well, and and that's the thing, right? Because everybody is so fixated on the top two names, right? And the cycle, Jim Harbaugh, Sean Payton. I, I really want to point out, and, and I've said it, and I'm going to sound like a, a, a broken record here, but the biggest name may not be the best guy for the job. And some background here is when the Broncos were conducting their head coaching search after Gary Kubiak had stepped away, Jim Caldwell was interviewed. And the Broncos, they really liked him, but... John Elway was really in love with Vance Joseph. I mean, we all know the rumblings that he's had his eye on Vance Joseph for, you know, a multitude of things, even a defensive coordinator position when Gary Kubiak was initially hired as the head coach. But John Elway was vastly in love with what Vance Joseph had to offer, which is crazy because when you look back in hindsight, it's like, okay, yeah, you probably should have went with Jim Caldwell. Like, that would have been a great choice instead of Vance Joseph. But, you know, it is what it is. We can only look back and say, oh, well, it didn't work out for the Broncos. But for Caldwell, here's the thing. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, he coached the Lions. He didn't really do anything. I think people are forgetting about Jim Caldwell. Now, when he was the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, obviously, like, they had a lot of success there. And, and for example, let's take a look at his record as a head coach. I'll read it off right here. 2009, led the Colts to a 14-2 and record. Everyone's going to say, well, he had Peyton Manning as his quarterback. Why do we, we cherry-pick details? 
for trying to justify or diminish what a coach has done. I mean, you could have a great quarterback but have terrible coaching, as we have seen in, in history around the NFL. That matters. The next year, 2010, 10 and 6, 2 and 14 in 2011. But you want to know what year that was? That was the year that Peyton Manning was out for the entire year with the neck injury. God, who was their starting quarterback at the time? I remember, was it like um, someone was Painter? Tolzine. Tolzine was Oh, yeah. Paint, Curtis yeah. Painter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're really going to win games with Curtis Painter as your quarterback. You know, nothing against Painter. But, you know, the next year, you know, he, he gets fired after that. He goes to Detroit, leads them to an 11 5 record. They go to the playoffs. The year after that, they did have a losing record, 7 and 9. But then he finished out his career as a head coach in 2016 2017, back to back. Nine and seven seasons. I know a lot of members in Broncos country that would gratefully take that at this point in time. So an overall record of sixty-two and fifty. With I think you can really look at that year without Peyton Manning as an anomaly in terms of some of the stuff that they dealt with. That was the open times where, like on Twitter, was popular. People were like, uh, you know, suck for luck. They were openly saying like, okay, hey, this is a team that's probably going to tank for that, and they did go with Andrew Luck. So I, I think it's important to highlight that Jim Caldwell is not a pushover. And Jim Caldwell, and I know Sarah, you and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. Jim Caldwell is not a guy who's just going to satisfy checking the box for the Broncos because they have to adhere to the Rooney rule. The Broncos internally strongly believe that Jim Caldwell would be a great coaching candidate. Everybody who's got an interview lined up with Denver, Sarah, the Broncos feel really strongly about that either one of these guys can be their next head coach. So I think that while the Rooney rule we can acknowledge that is in place because obviously NFL hiring practices historically have been very shady and there are a lot of great minority candidate coaches who don't get the opportunities that they deserve. Jim Caldwell has a record and a resume that speaks for itself. And I think that he has immediately become, in my opinion, don't be surprised, Broncos country, if he is the under the radar favorite for the job. And obviously, we'll dive into on today's episode, Locked On Broncos. We're going to talk about our top three candidates each. Sarah has his three. I have my three. We want to know what your three is. So let us know in the YouTube comment section down below if you're watching this on YouTube who your top three coaching candidates are. We'll get to that on today's episode. Lockdown Broncos. But this episode of the show is brought to you by our friends, BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league that's out there. From pro football to college bowl season, basketball, World Cup, they've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those as well. We're always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline where the game starts. And our good friends, the ultimate football GM. And if you've ever wanted to be an NFL general manager, you've wanted to make key decisions that will lead your franchise to the promised land of winning championships, winning in the playoffs. Now you have the opportunity all in the palm of your hand with ultimate football GM. You get to manage every strategic aspect of your team. You can play through the season, lead your team to glory, and you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and the right coordinators, trading players, making draft picks, and navigating your franchise through the ups and downs of a season, free agency, and the draft. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. You can play on the go as you want and when you want to. Lockdown Broncos listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On. That's in all caps in the game store. That's Locked On in all caps, so make sure you check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate gm Dot com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. All right, Sarah, getting into our top three candidates for the Denver Broncos head coaching job here in 2023 after the team parted ways with Nathaniel Hackett just 15 games into his first season. The Walton Penner family ownership group is looking for the next hire to be the strong hire, to be the guy that's going to be around here for years to help restore the winning tradition that is Denver Broncos football. Just want to say thank you so much, everybody in Broncos country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day on your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you watch us on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, do us a quick favor. Hit that like button down below, comment for the algorithm, share your thoughts, engage with other members in Broncos country. We appreciate all the interaction we get here. Sarah, let's go through the top three, right? Well, you know, everyone's like, okay, top three. You're just going to name one, two, and three. No, we're going to go down the list. I want you to start things off here. Who is your number three candidate on the list for Broncos head coaches here in 2023 and why? 
Well, that's a great question. And it's important to remember here, Cody, that like, I, I don't necessarily have a, Hey, I, I'm going to be upset if, you know, such and such isn't the, the Broncos head coach. Like, I don't know that I have a discerned number one candidate in my mind yet. You remember last year I was all about Nathaniel Hackett. So yeah. I own that, you know, I felt like he was the best guy for the job and it was not the case. So here we go. We reset. I at number three right now, Cody, I have D'Amico Ryans, the defensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers. And look, I think he's going to be a fantastic head coach in the NFL. So me having him number three means nothing as far as the excitement level that I would have if he did become the head coach of the Denver Broncos. I personally believe he would be fantastic in that role. And he checks a lot of boxes, doesn't he? I mean, he's gotten the most out of his players. He did a great job taking over. Remember, he had big shoes to fill. Robert Sala was one of the best assistant coaches in the NFL. And D'Amico Ryans was, you know, next man up, right? And he's done a tremendous job. Comes from a great coaching tree. Obviously, his defense has been outstanding, no matter what metric you look despite at. Injuries he's a too. Former, despite injuries, exactly, including to Nick Bosa, arguably his best player. So he's been able to, to do a lot with the pieces that they have there. And I also think, too, you, you look at the fact that he's a former player and it should be lost on no one. How many of the Broncos candidates this year that they have are former players? You can do you can go do that research on your own and find that out. Former being a former player is absolutely critical, I think, in this search, because you had Hackett, who wasn't necessarily a former NFL player. Right. And, and I think that that does factor in with some of the guys in the locker room or your ability to, to relate to those guys. And, and I think that's something that a lot of these candidates have in common. So I love the fact that D'Amico Ryans was a very good player in the NFL, a very good linebacker for the Texans, for the Eagles. And he comes from that Shanahan coaching tree, which we know that that's a very fruitful tree at this point in time. So he would be my number three guy as of right now, Cody, but being number three really doesn't mean much in terms of, I, I, I would be very excited to get him as the head coach of the Broncos. And I think it's important to kind of make that discernment that, you know, for us, these are who we believe are the top three candidates out of all the candidates that are listed. And I think D'Amico Ryans is absolutely qualified. And I think every coaching candidate the Broncos want to interview, I think are extremely qualified to be the next guy. My number three guy, and like I said, there's no preference. Like if this is the guy, I, I'm happy for the Broncos. I think they would be a good move either way. I got Ejiro Ever, right? So you and I kind of start off at number three with two first-time head coaches if it were them getting the job. With Ejiro Ever, I don't think I need to say anything more about his leadership qualities, right? There were so many people that were wondering, and ourselves included, how is he going to use the same guys that you know Vic Fangio had on the defense? How can he take how good Vic Fangio's defense was and preserve that? Well, Sarah, I mean... We saw him, in my opinion, I think his defense was better than Vic Fangio's defense with pressure, with just how they worked, how they flowed, and, and takeaways. You had more takeaways, more sacks with the Broncos under Evero than you did really in, in a lot of your years with Vic Fangio. He had a different style. He related to the players, and he also made the, the defense kind of aimed around what the players do really well, and he factored in their feedback. Ejiro Evero has great leadership qualities. Like I said, I talked with Josie Jewell last week, and I asked him, what type of leadership qualities does Ejiro Evero have that would make him a great head coaching candidate? And Josie said, I mean, you look at how our defense is played. Look at how we feel about him on the defensive side of the ball. Every single guy there this is a guy who relates to us. This is a guy who knows our families, gets to know our families away from football. He is a true leader. He's collaborative. And he doesn't always act like he has all the answers. And it's not my way or the highway. There's this mutual respect that we have with one another. And I think that's important. But I also lay out another important detail here that not many people know about, not many people talk about. Greg Penner, Broncos CEO, he goes around the locker room. He's done this all season long. He's gone around the locker room, and he's talked to players about various things. He's asked players about, you know, what's going on, like, with injuries, what's, you know, how are they feeling, strength training, things like that. But there's also other things that he's asked, and I guarantee you he's went around he's asked, what are your thoughts? Like, what type of qualities does Ejiro ever have? And, you know, as a, as a guy who's going to be in charge of making the decision to hire the next head coach, 
you do want some feedback from what your players, because ultimately these are the guys that are going to be coached by whoever this new guy is that comes in. So Greg Penner is also taking into consideration the opinions and the perspectives of players that are already on the roster. And I imagine Justin Simmons is a big part of that. Russell Wilson, they have asked him, but these players aren't ultimately going to influence the decision that ownership makes. But it is valuable information that ownership believes is necessary to factor into when they interview these candidates and when they have to evaluate who they are going to hire for the job, which now leads us to our next one. Sarah, who is your number two candidate for the Broncos head coaching job? Well, right now I've got it as Sean Payton, Cody. And as we've been recording this, you know, Mike Kliss dropped a little report that the Broncos will officially interview Sean Payton next week. So we now know that that's in the cards. Before that, we didn't know whether, well, how did his meeting with the ownership group go? Things like that. Now we know he will officially interview next week along with other candidates like Raheem Morris, D'Amico Ryans, Dan Quinn. So those guys are all scheduled to actually interview with the Broncos. Now we know that they're not just on the target list. But I have Sean Payton as number two, mainly because, and I think this is a fascinating discussion point, so sound off in the comments here with this if you have a, a different thought on this. I personally don't mind the idea of trading the draft pick for Sean Payton. However, if it gets crazy in terms of the trade compensation, that's kind of where I teeter on the edge of, well, would you rather just go a different direction or do you believe he is truly that valuable of a coach to your team to trade certain assets to get him? And I think that that's a question that's going to have to be asked. We've heard reports, right? The Broncos have not balked at the trading asking price for Sean Payton, right? We know that they're willing to move forward in these discussions regardless of what the Saints are asking for. But if it starts getting crazy, you know, me personally, I'd almost rather kind of tread lightly. The, the reports that we've heard Cody don't make it really seem like Sean Payton is you know going crazy about the opportunity to, to become the head coach of the Denver Broncos until we start hearing that or seeing reports of that I kind of am leaning on the edge of somebody else for number one although if all things equal let's say every candidate wants the Broncos as their number one job right if that's the case I think Payton would get shoved up into my number one spot based on his track record in the NFL However, at this point in time, there's other factors that are playing into it. And I think that's some of those factors, right? Is like, why would Sean Payton, like obviously Sean Payton will interview, but why would he want to limit himself to just one team, right? We know that there is an opening in Arizona with the Arizona Cardinals firing Cliff Kingsbury, and they also have no general manager over there, which is a perfect power play. I think if you're the Cardinals organization, say, hey, we want to bring in Sean Payton. If he wants some organizational say, we're also going to give him that as well. That makes that appealing. The Los Angeles Chargers, depending on how things go, if they lose in round one of the Jaguars, I could see Brennan Staley being fired. We know Peyton lives in Los Angeles. And there's been reports out there that he would love to coach a guy like Justin Herbert. I think that's out there. It's evident. We all know that Sean McVay more than likely is going to step away. So he could inherit that and have a little bit more of the say on the personnel side in Los Angeles, potentially with a guy like Baker Mayfield. While he still has Matthew Stafford under contract for now, Baker Mayfield could be a little bit of a long-term future plan for them, considering all the draft pick talk and whatnot. We know the Rams were looking to offset a lot of draft picks to acquire Brian Burns at the NFL trade deadline. We're talking about multiple first-round picks into the future. So they have the capital to be able to do that with the New Orleans Saints. And then I also think another wild card is the Dallas Cowboys. If they lose in the playoffs, I could see Jerry Jones stepping in because we know how he is. I could see him saying, we are firing Mike McCarthy. And he's always made it known that Sean Payton would really, for him, was the one who got away. So I think that there's so many different things that you have to consider that, you know, maybe I think Peyton is considering himself, but I do think, yes, his record, his track record speaks for itself as a winning coach and he's maximized. He's gotten some good stuff out of a lot of offenses that he's coached as well. You can't discount that one bit, but I think when you look at some of those other scenarios, Denver, in my opinion, for Peyton probably isn't as appealing as some of those other spots. Now, quickly here, I'm going to give you my number two here, and I think we can expand on a little bit more coming up in the next segment here, Locked On Broncos. But I've got Jim Harbaugh as my number two guy, and people are like, whoa, you got Jim Harbaugh as your number two? Like, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Harbaugh is a great football leader. He's a great football mind. And some people would say he's he's odd, right? Like, he's odd in a football way. And... I think for him, what we talk about that personality-wise, you're talking with Graham Glasgow. He, he told us, like, Jim Harbaugh, because he played for him one year, 
Jim Harbaugh is the type of guy that wants to be sure what he's saying is coming out in the way he intends it. He's very careful with, with his wording because he's very introspective like that, which I can respect that 110%. Um, I do think that outside of that, like, would he want to try to call plays? I, I think that's something I firmly believe the next head coach shouldn't be a play caller for the Broncos. They need to be a leader that will lead the direction of the team and delegate play calling to somebody on offense somebody on defense. Those are my thoughts. But I also have the concern about burnout from former players. I mean, Randy Moss, he went to he went to the 49ers in 2012, and he said that he just could not vibe with, obviously, a guy like Jim Harbaugh. There are multiple players that, you know, that was really, they had a nasty divorce in San Francisco, and it's because he lost the locker room really quickly because how he was coaching guys wasn't I think meshing with what was going on with them. And I think obviously that can lead to a boiling point. It was a nasty end for them in San Francisco. So I will say that those are my concerns. Burnout from players, kind of similar to how Broncos players had that with Vic Fangio. So Broncos country, you know, continue on our conversation here on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. Sarah and myself, we are going to share our number one, or, you know, not necessarily number one, but when we're talking about top three, we're at the bottom of the list, the top tier who we believe would probably be the best guy for the job. We'll get into that on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. But this episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. And if you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and all the calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. And we just got through the holidays. And I know my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year. But if you're like me or where you want to eat healthier, but you don't want to compromise taste, then I've got just the thing for you. You've got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. And they're so delicious that you won't think that they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. And what makes Built Bar so good? good is the fact that each bar is covered in 100% milk chocolate. Yes, 100% milk chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste better than actual candy bars. And they're filled with 17 grams of protein. That is healthy for you, and you can get your, you know, the most bang for your buck. And we always used to say you, you had to go to Built.com and use promo code Locked On to get, you know, percentage off but here's the reality of the situation built has been so popular it has grown so quickly you can now head to your local walmart for a box you can head to sam's club for a bulk box of built bar so make sure you check it out you can also do it at built.com but head to your local sam's club or walmart to get built right next to wherever you live and you can thank me later for it enjoy your built bar courtesy lockdown broncos who is the top one or number one candidate for the Denver Broncos head coaching search in the opinions of myself and Sarah Bettinger. That's something we're breaking down on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. Just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in all year long and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. One thing we can promise you is that every single day, all year long, we have you covered with everything that's going on in Dove Valley, whether it's free agency, the NFL draft, OTAs, press conferences, practice, and games We're there for you every step of the way. So thank you so much, Broncos Country. We appreciate you continuing on our conversation here today. Sarah, my friend, let's get into the number one, right? We we went through and chose our candidates. I talked about Jim Harbaugh as my number two, but it appears here Jim Harbaugh is your number one candidate. Let's dive into why. Let's dive into it. Look, Jim Harbaugh has won a lot of games as a head coach in the NFL, in the NFL college, whatever you want to look at. He's done a great job. He's done a tremendous job. And I look at, you know, the endorsement that Jerry Rosberg gave just before the season ended for the Denver Broncos and the words that he had to say about the brother of his former boss in Baltimore, right? I mean, Jerry Rosberg worked for John Harbaugh. He said that he's very close to the Harbaugh family and he kind of outlined it was what was the, the names the that he Harburgs, said? Yeah. The Harburgs or the Rosbaws. Yeah. So I thought that was great. I thought it was cool insight. And I also thought it was fascinating that I, I maybe he was prepared for this before the press conference, but he went all the way back to Jim Harbaugh cutting his teeth a, a, in a corner, you know, cubicle as an assistant coach after being a Pro Bowl quarterback in the NFL and working his way up the job that he did at San Diego. Remember where he coached Josh Johnson and and then he come up into Stanford and you get that program back to a a place where they were competing with the best of the best. And then he goes to the 49ers and reaches the Super Bowl, right? And, And then you go to Michigan and now they've obviously got to the college football playoff, beating Ohio State. There's so much going for Jim Harbaugh in terms of 
I know people want to diminish regular season success, Cody, but I honestly, I, I honestly hate that because it does matter. You know, you got to get to that point to be able to, you know, be at the dance or to be in the big games. And people said the same crap about Peyton Manning, right? They were talking about how, oh, Peyton Manning can win in the regular season, but when the weather gets cold, you know, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. That always bothered me so much because it diminished the greatness that Peyton Manning put forth you know, the majority of the time, it's almost like it, it, it's almost like in fantasy football, how my team doesn't win the championship ever. But if I have like the highest scoring team in the league, I'm like, man, I was the best team all year. And, and that didn't matter in the end because I lost one game. I think it, it would be super foolish to diminish what Harbaugh has done a 71 percent win percentage between college and the NFL in terms of regular season, postseason, everything. 71 percent of his games that's insane. And the common denominator there is Jim Harbaugh, right? Obviously, he has gotten results wherever he's been. And like you mentioned, there's issues and, and things that you could look back to with the San Francisco 49ers. I think you could almost say that about any divorce in the NFL or yeah. any separation in the NFL. <laughs> so there's always going to be some negative fallout. But I think it's valid, the points that you make, because it's important to consider the positives and the negatives. It's important because this is going to be the you know big guy in denver this is going to be the face of the franchise essentially along with russell wilson and greg penner i think that you have to get this right and i think jim harbaugh is a guy that he he's a he's been a culture changer before he has taken nfl teams far before he's taken college teams regardless if it's san diego or, or stanford or michigan he's taken them far i think that there's so much going for him that to me especially because he's a former quarterback himself. If he comes in and decides, okay, I can work with Russell Wilson. I can put something together to make this team successful. That would give me the utmost confidence going into the 2023 season, which I think is why I lean to Harbaugh. I think those are all very fair points that you make. And I think that there's going to be a lot of people here listening to the show or watching that are going to agree with you. Uh, yeah. I mean, his, his track record speaks for itself and it's always, you know, the, the whole process of who is the best guy for the job. And, and ultimately, it's going to come down to who the Walton Penner Family Ownership Group believes. And I'm excited to figure out who that will be. My number one candidate was the one who emerged on Wednesday. It's going to be Jim Caldwell. And as you and I talked about here early on in the show, is that before we ever got to identify a list of candidates to talk about on the show, before the Broncos ever put a list together, we talked about Jim Caldwell being one of those guys that should absolutely be considered for the head coaching job. And just so, you know, it just so happened on Wednesday, he got got the magical name too much makes sense with Peyton Manning like here's the deal okay Peyton Manning obviously doesn't have an ownership stake in the football team and I know a lot of people are saying okay is he going to be involved with the ownership group we've also heard from the ownership group that they plan to advise with Peyton Manning like anytime they have a question like they the phone's there they know it they can contact him and I think Peyton Manning's endorsement some of his word I think does run strong here not to mention with Condoleezza Rice as well being a very integral part of this head coaching search alongside Greg Penner and George Peyton Jim Caldwell is a true leader what have we heard from Broncos fans since Jerry Rosberg the Broncos need a coach like Rosberg to lead this team you want to know who is like that Jim Caldwell is a great example of that. And I think that a lot of people shouldn't discount him. I, I think all these coaches, as I've said here several times on today's show, are all qualified to be the next head coach. In my opinion, I wouldn't be disappointed if any of these guys got selected as a head coach. I see several situations. If Ajiro Evro doesn't take a head coaching job because he's got interviews lined up with various organizations, if he doesn't get selected as a head coach to be a first-year head coach for another team, I see him back in Denver regardless as the team's defensive coordinator if he doesn't get the head coaching job in Denver. If Harbaugh's the coach, I expect Ajiro Evro, if he doesn't have a head coaching job, to be the D.C. Same thing with Jim Caldwell. Same thing with Dan Quinn at this point in time. Heck, even same thing if Raheem Morris gets the job here, or D'Amico Ryans, I do expect Ejiro Evro to be the DC in 2023. But for me, I think it's Jim Caldwell. I think he's a proven leader. His track record speaks for itself. He relates to players really well, and he is a no-nonsense, like, hey, we're this is our vision, and this is what we need to do to get there. And I think that you will get immediate buy-in from the locker room. To me, I would like to see Jim Caldwell make his return to the NFL. And if it was with the Denver Broncos, I'd say, hey, 
That's a great pick. So, Broncos country, we're eager for your thoughts. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, you comment in the comment section down below who your top three head coaching candidates are for the Broncos head coaching job that is vacant. Hopefully, they'll have that solidified before the Super Bowl. I'll be in Phoenix for Radio Row all week long, beginning that week, and I'm hoping that they get it done before and so I can attend the press conference of whoever the next Broncos head coach is. Will be. Let us know in the YouTube comments or you can tweet us on Twitter anytime at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Lockdown Broncos. Sarah Bettinger and myself will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of the show.